Elon Musk was asked to attend a hearing in the European Parliament, where he'd have to explain his goals for the Twitter takeover. After Elon Musk bought this influential social network for 44 billion US dollars, he was immediately challenged by various European governments and members of parliament. Elon Musk is in serious trouble, and he has been warned by European governments, including the French president. As Musk has been warned, Twitter will have to comply with some of the world's harshest anti-toxic content legislation rules, or Musk will be punished. With that, European officials came out and talked about everything Musk should do on Twitter to avoid billions of dollars of fines by the EU. But Musk's response to these threats was very interesting, and the situation is getting very tense. While the European Union is expected to be a worldwide leader in trying to control Musk's reinvented platform as a result of the new digital regulations. The rule will not be completely implemented until 2024, and EU officials are trying to find enough staff to keep some form of influence on big tech. So, the EU's broad set of legislation, known as the Digital Services Act, intends to have bigger control for unlawful and harmful content, such as hate speech, fraud, and misinformation. They'll go live next summer for the majority of digital corporations, such as Facebook and TikTok, before expanding to all internet services the following year. These norms are set to collide with Musk's unexpected Twitter policies. A lot may happen in six months, but it appears like Twitter will be Europe's first significant test case for implementing the DSA, according to John Albert of Berlin-based Algorithm Watch, a non-profit advocacy and research group. And first, it started with Britain when the members of parliament from the United Kingdom invited Musk to the British Parliament to get an idea of how the billionaire plans to balance free speech all while protecting users. The UK Parliamentary Committee requested that Elon Musk provide information about Twitter's proposals in greater detail. When he responded, saying it was premature to divulge such information and answer the questions presented by Parliament, they persisted in wanting to learn more about his plans for the company, specifically how verification for all users would be rolled out. The UK's online safety bill seeks to protect against digital abuse and the committee chair was eager to know how Elon Musk intended to reconcile his commitment towards free speech with these newly implemented responsibilities. After Britain, it was Jeff Bezos who continued to raise safety questions. After Elon Musk acquired Twitter, Bezos couldn't resist taking a swipe at him. The Amazon creator took to the social media platform and questioned if China had gained a little influence over the town square due to Musk's purchase. Bezos responded with a resounding, probably not. His reasoning? He argued that it was more likely for Tesla to confront complications in China than Twitter restrictions. As evidence of this, Bezos referred to an article written by a reporter from the New York Times, which highlighted how central China is to Tesla's business as its second largest market. After concluding a deal via Twitter, Musk labeled the platform as a digital town square and made his commitment to freedom of expression one of the main factors in purchasing it. Thus, Bezos's witty comment on Town Square. According to Bezos, it is more likely that a complex situation between China and Tesla will occur in the future instead of affecting Twitter. Tesla has prospered greatly in China due to the nation's strong dedication to environmental sustainability. The company was granted low interest financing and permission to fully own its local operations, allowing them growth opportunities that have proven successful. In fact, Elon stunned everyone when he said in Shanghai, I'm not sure how well it is known outside of China, just how much China is a world leader in environmental sustainability. It's extremely impressive. Musk has advocated for freedom of speech, not freedom of reach, and has stated his intent to lower negative and abusive remarks. According to EU digital policy head Thierry Britton, during a video conference with Musk this month, the billionaire Tesla CEO said that the bloc's laws are a reasonable approach to adopt on a global scale. Other countries lag far behind Europe, Silicon Valley lobbyists have mostly succeeded in keeping federal politicians at bay in the United States, and Congress has been ideologically divided on efforts to address competition, internet privacy, misinformation, and other issues. Britain is developing its own online safety bill, but it has lately been scaled down, and it is unclear when it will be adopted. Elon Musk's announcement about buying Twitter also was challenged by Emmanuel Macron. Musk's approach is a big issue that necessitates greater control, according to the French President Macron on Good Morning America. According to him, in Europe, you may exhibit your right to free speech by writing whatever you wish. However, he stated that there are obligations and limitations. Macron, who recently met with Musk in the United States, recently stated that Twitter must take measures to comply with European legislation. The EU will force web corporations to follow clear guidelines when dealing with illegal material and to clarify to consumers why the material was removed or labeled as dangerous. 
they must be open about how much their content filtering systems and recommendation algorithms function, which propose the next music, news item, or product to consumers. They must allow EU regulators to assess their efforts. Breton, the EU's digital policy director, said he warned Musk about the penalty for infractions, which include fines of up to 6% of worldwide annual revenue, which could amount to billions of dollars. Repeat offences may result in an EU-wide ban. Musk and Twitter did not reply to requests for comment. To counter such lawful but awful content, which regularly frustrates content moderators, the EU will impose further scrutiny on the largest internet platforms, those with 45 million monthly users. Big platforms will have to evaluate how they handle systemic risks, including harassment, hoaxes, and manipulation. By the summer, the first modifications resulting from the law should surface in the form of digital buttons on websites and applications, allowing people to easily flag illegal material. The extensive regulation also makes it difficult for regulators to employ sufficient enforcers. EU authorities predict that they will need to hire more than 100 full-time employees by 2024 to enforce the DSA and other new digital competition laws. Each of the EU's 27 member states will also need to pay more employees to regulate smaller platforms and communicate with Brussels. Furthermore, IT firms must hire more compliance personnel. All three groups will be looking for specialists who understand how platforms and their algorithms function, have insight into sites' content moderation processes, and have expertise in implementing legislation. The issue is that they may wind up vying for the same talent, according to Rita Jonasate, advocacy coordinator at EU DisinfoLab, a profit that investigates disinformation. Some European nations are concerned that they will lack the resources and ability to implement the regulations, particularly if they are developing capabilities in areas like misinformation from scratch. A top German official advised the European Commission that the social media site Twitter should be controlled under new EU digital market regulations, claiming that the company's new owner poses a threat to free expression. Because of its effect on public opinion, Sven Giegold, the state's secretary in control of competition policy at Germany's economy ministry, believes Twitter should be regarded as a gatekeeper under the EU's new Digital Markets Act. This categorization would allow for EU oversight. Giegold expressed his worries about Twitter's platform guidelines and their abrupt alterations and arbitrary execution in the eight weeks following Musk's takeover of the network in a letter to two European commissioners. That's it for today. Subscribe to our channel and hit the notification bell 